Next on our list, we have our suction line filter dryer. A lot of misconceptions about these suction line filter dryers, and hopefully we can clear that up today. So the suction line filter dryer does go on the suction line, and its job is to protect the compressor. They're mainly used when you have a burnout or something like this. Now the problem is a lot of people use them for just any reason. They'll slap it one in thinking, well, it protects the compressor. There is a problem. The suction line filter dryer actually picks up a very small quantity of any H2O and a liquid line filter dryer will pick up much more capacity than a suction line will. Because the low pressure and the lower temperature of the refrigerant coming through here, they're less effective at actually drying. The bigger issue is when these do get clogged up, and they do get clogged up easily, the problem is they cause a severe pressure drop between one side and the other. That pressure drop, even a few PSI, causes a significant amount of work on the compressor. So people will put in a suction line filter dryer, leave it, and that suction line filter dryer actually will start damaging the compressor. So the thing you're trying to do to protect the compressor actually kills it. Kayer says they want these to stay in no more than 72 hours. My friend Don Gillis with Emerson also agreed that 72 hours is max. Let's take a closer look at how this suction line filter dryer works. This is what we call a pancake style because it's squished in. I have another style here and let's open this one up and take a look inside. So we have a port here and a port here so we can measure the pressure drop across it. Now we don't want any pressure drop, one, two PSI max and it really depends on the manufacturer's numbers. That always overrides what I say anyways, but we wanna make sure there's no pressure drop. And if we take this cover off, we see inside this one has these little BBs. Now these BBs, very similar to the one on the liquid line dryer, is a desiccant material. Their job is to absorb moisture, and typically on the suction line, they're more for acid than they are for moisture. Moisture control does really well on the liquid side, and acid control does really well on the suction side. So there's different types of BBs they use for the two. Desiccate, on this side, there's a flat disc right here, so the refrigerant can't go anywhere. It goes up to the edge, and the very edge is perforated. In other words, a lot of little holes. So refrigerant comes through this desiccate material to the inside tube, and then from the inside tube, it carries on to the other side, and we can measure the pressure there. Let's dump these BBs out and see what it looks like underneath. So what we have left is this material here. It's a type of filter material. So this is doing two jobs. One, it's keeping the BBs from coming through the line. And the other job it's doing is actually filtering any contaminants from getting into that suction line. So this is a large surface area. Notice how it has these ridges up and down, up and down. If we were to stretch this out, it would be a lot longer. So having that extended surface area helps reduce any type of uh, restriction. Notice here, as small as this is, we don't have enough room to do that. So an oil filter is very similar. An oil filter has these little ridges and typically look for an oil filter with more ridges because that's more filtration with less restriction. Very similar here. Now we talked about the ends. Let's take a look at the ends. So here we can see those perforations right here. These perforations are the holes and right here in the center, it's just a blanked off plate. So the refrigerant can only go from the outside section. We can measure the pressure of the refrigerant coming in. On the other side, we can see that this big hollow hole here in the middle, that's where the refrigerant's gonna be coming out. We can also measure the pressure right here where the refrigerant's coming out. So you can see it's just a hollow hole and that material is pretty thick. No light is shining through it. So it's a pretty sturdy material. That's all we have. Now there's more than one kind. This kind is with the loose BBs or the individual desiccate material, but they also make a solid style type. So here's a solid desiccate. You wanna be careful that you don't drop these because they can break. So here we have the refrigerant coming from this side and it goes around all the way through the edges. So all the way from the edges on the top, it's going through to the very center. So it's filtering out the material. From there, we end up with this material. This is our filter right here. So this is filtering it. And then we have this little screen right here. So this screen is also filtering it. And then beyond that little screen, we have another piece of metal that's perforated metal. That's holding it all together. So if any of this desiccate comes loose, it gets hung in filter number one, screen number one, and then screen number two. So it's really robust is how it works. So it's pretty cool, it's pretty simple. You have solid core, and then you have the desiccate, or the individual BB style. I'm sure there's a better name for it. Those are our two basic styles that we have. Now, a lot of these 
filter dryers will have two ports on it. I really like that because you can measure your pressure drop very easily, very effectively. However, some only have one port in it, such as this one. So if pressure drop is so incredibly important, why is there only one port? Well, if we back up and think about it, this will be outside protecting the compressor, and we're gonna have our service valve here. So we can check at our service valve what the pressure is on this side, and we can check at the unit what our pressure is on this side. So we can see if there's any pressure drop. So if there's any pressure drop, we're gonna to wanna to change that filter dryer. So it's a very important process for us to do, to make sure we don't have any pressure drop, and a little bit of a pressure drop can definitely kill the compressor. It's also important to note that you wanna leave these caps on that filter dryer until you're absolutely 100% ready to install it. So once you're ready to install it, it's the last thing you do, you put this on and you start flowing nitrogen through so you don't absorb any moisture. You wanna make sure that you're keeping that desiccant in as good of a shape as possible. Let's look at what a brand new one would look like. Here we have our number SLD, that stands for suction line filter dryer. So suction line dryer, 307, that's our desiccant size. And then V, I'm not sure what the V is, 7 eighths is the outside diameter, so that's our suction size pipe. And then it says ODF for outside diameter, solder. So it's gonna be solder, braze, sweat. And if we open this up, we'll notice a little different, little difference about how this one is versus the liquid line filter dryers. So here we can see this has double layers of cardboard on it. So it's protected a whole lot better than the other ones. And also it comes with these very important things such as inside of here is our valve cores that go into our ends. So we wanna make sure we put those in and it actually has instructions. So you should always read the instructions. So let's take a quick look at these instructions. So instruction number one, this is talking about a liquid line and this is a suction line dryer, but uh, either way it tells us uh, which direction it can be installed. It tells us what refrigerant it's compatible with. It tells us which angles it can be installed in. It tells us making sure we have the right direction. So it can't, your refrigerant can't be flowing this way when the arrow is pointing that way. Refrigerant's flowing this way, the arrow's flowing that way, great. It says about cutting the ends off, um, making sure that we don't have any moisture come in when we're ready. We wanna make sure that we protect the filter dryer with a wet rag so we don't burn the paint off and we're running into, running nitrogen through while we braze. It says we wanna make sure it's mounted and supported. It says don't drop it, so that means it's probably a solid core, we don't wanna damage it. And it says it's not effective in temperatures less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now hopefully in my life, I never have to work on a refrigeration system where it's less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, but if it is, we know that this is gonna be least effective. So we've got that out of the way. Has our direction, so this is our port coming in. It doesn't have another port on this side, so we're gonna to have to use the pressure gauge on the system. Now we also talked earlier about that 72 hour thing, especially with 410A. So having these outside notoriously for rusting. So just leaving them outside, they're going to end up rusting. This one was protected really well when it's brazed, but see that bare metal, especially in the ocean around Florida, that's gonna end up rusting out. And these are notorious for leaking, notorious for leaking. So just for the fact that they're gonna leak alone isn't a great idea, but let's talk about having to change this. So we have our filter dryer installed here and what's gonna happen is we come back in 72 hours and we look for a pressure drop. If there is a pressure drop, then we're gonna to have to change the dryer again. So that means we gotta take, pump the refrigerant down, take the refrigerant out of the system. We have to then cut out our old filter dryer. We have to braze in our new filter dryer while flowing nitrogen. We have to pressure test, we have to pull a deep vacuum and then recharge with refrigerant. So we have to keep doing that over and over and over until we get no pressure drop. After we get no pressure drop, we gotta take all the refrigerant out of the system or pump it down. We have to recover that last little bit, take this out, put a straight piece of copper in its place, run nitrogen while we braze, we have to pressure test, pull a vacuum below 500 microns, make sure it holds for 20 minutes, and then uh, charge with refrigerant. It's a lot of work. So I come up with my own method. This isn't an industry standard thing, this is a Ty Brandman thing. So my own method is when I absolutely have to have a suction line filter dryer, I add this valve right here. This is a manual control valve. So we have the valve already on the system. We unscrew the top and there's a key here so we can open and close it. And I add another valve on this side. What works great about this for me is time. The valve costs money, yes, but the time I save is very important. So if I come back and this has a pressure drop, what I wanna do is simply close this valve, close this valve, and according to EPA, pull a, uh, recover the little bit of refrigerant that's in here. Then I can cut out the filter dryer. 
I can braze them a new filter dryer while flowing nitrogen. I flow nitrogen in through my port across the system and it bleeds out this side. Braze it in. I can then pressure test just this short section, make sure it's not leaking. Then I'm pulling a vacuum only on this very short section of pipe. So the vacuum is going to pull down very quickly. Once my vacuum pulls down, then all I have to do is open this valve and open this valve and my system is back working it. So it's a little bit of extra money for this valve, but look how much time it saves me. Then when I'm done and I don't have any pressure drop, all I have to do is simply close this valve off, close this valve off, do the same thing, recover that last little bit of refrigerant. I know you're watching EPA. And then we take this filter dryer out and I put a straight piece of copper in, run nitrogen through while I'm brazing, uh, make sure I pressure test my braze, pull a vacuum just between these two points, and then once my vacuum's done, I open this valve, open this valve, and the refrigerant's flowing again. So it's a quick little trick I've found to make sure if I have to use a suction line filter dryer, it saves me a whole lot of time in the long run. Now here's an even better solution. If I have a system that needs a suction line filter dryer, and the only time you're really going to need a suction line filter dryer is when you have a burnout. That means the compressor windings burnt out, all the oil's burnt, and you have acid in the system. What I've found is the better solution. So if I have a burnout, I'm already going to have to replace my compressor, which means my lines are going to be open here and here. So what I also do is open my lines here and here and here as well. And what I can do is run a flush through and flush out my condensing coil and get all of the old oil out of my condensing unit. I can then flush my liquid line and get all of the old refrigerant and oil out of my liquid line, clean my meter device separately, and flush out my evaporator and get all of the old oil out of my evaporator as much as I possibly can. I can then flush out my suction line and clean that suction line out individually. Now I can rebraze my compressor and my line here, rebraze my line here with my new filter dryer, put my TXV or metering device back together. And then I want to make sure I pull a good deep vacuum to get all of any of the cleaner out. You can't leave any of the cleaner in there. Now, if I do that, I have no oil, old oil, or no acid less than that, left in that system. So now I don't need to have a suction line filter dryer in there because I know I don't have any, oil, any contaminated oil or acid in there. Another important thing that we can do, and it's not something I like to do, we can add a product called Acid Away. So if we're having to deal with a burnout, we can add a chemical inside of the oil before we put it back together, and that oil will neutralize any of the acid. Now, if you mix it wrong, you can end up with a base and you're changing the properties of the refrigerant. I personally don't like to use it, but I have had to use it before, and I didn't have any issues with it, but it always makes me nervous. So if we add some of the acid neutralizer in here, it will help neutralize any of the acid. Now here we have our suction line accumulator drawn in a refrigeration system. If for whatever reason you can't get a new suction line accumulator. Now, if for whatever reason we cannot get a new suction line accumulator and we need the old one, we can put our suction line filter dryer right here. So as the refrigerant's flowing through our suction line accumulator, it's filtering the refrigerant before it hits the compressor but you're still gonna have the issue of, are you ever gonna get all the oil cleaned out and filtered from there? And are you gonna keep coming back every 72 hours and clean that line? So I've found that if I do a good enough job cleaning these lines, I don't have to put in a suction line filter dryer. Now that's in a perfect world. And a lot of times you don't have the downtime to do all of that extra work. So you simply put in your new compressor, put in your suction line filter dryer, and you go on to the next call and then you schedule a time to come back within 72 hours and check to make sure this guy's still working. So sometimes you have to make exceptions. There's ideal ways we wanna do stuff. We wanna to try to do stuff the right way all the time, but sometimes you just end up having to make some exceptions. In this case, there's sometimes exceptions you have to make. And most importantly, follow the manufacturer's instructions and you also wanna make sure you do what your boss is telling you because he's writing your paycheck.